Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm checking out some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming February of 2016 regional auction. And one of the ones in here that I wanted to take a look at was this 1911, which is actually not quite a 1911, this is actually a model of 1914, manufactured in Norway. Uh, Norway is one of a handful of countries that adopted basically the Colt 1911 as its national service pistol. Uh, Argentina would be another uh, major example. And it's kind of funny, the, the background on this pistol is, I think, fairly interesting. Now, mechanically, this is almost identical to a standard 1911. The only difference of it is the slide release. And the Norwegians decided to make an enlarged, uh, lengthened slide release for the pistol. So other than that, and of course the markings, this is functionally identical to a 1911. So that's not what's interesting about these, it's the background and the history. So what was going on was in, in 1910, uh, Norway held some pistol trials, they wanted a new gun. This was happening pretty much everywhere around the world as countries got rid of revolvers and started looking to adopt semi-automatic service pistols for their militaries. And uh, so 1910 the Norwegians run a trial and they test a bunch of different guns and they come up with the Colt as the best design. Now this wouldn't have been the Colt in 1911, this would have been a slightly earlier version of the Colt, I'm not sure exactly which one. Um, but it's kind of a moot point because in the aftermath of this trial there was a, not, um, maybe not outrage, but a lot of people were upset that the trials commission had come back with a pistol that wasn't Norwegian. And it wasn't really acceptable, so they insisted that the trials be redone and the military make every effort to accommodate a Norwegian pistol, because having a domestic service pistol is kind of an issue of national pride. Uh, the Norwegians had the, the Krag Jorgensen, which is a basically locally designed rifle. Um, and you know it's funny, every country pretty much everywhere suffers from this at some point. Uh, certainly the US has uh, more than once uh, this, this problem of not invented here. Anyway, there's another trial in 1911 and Colt wins again. And there's another furor that erupts over this, and so they have a third trial in 1914, and you can probably guess where this is going, the Colt won again in 1914. So by that time people finally accepted the idea that, okay, fine, this really is the best service pistol for us at this point, we'll deal with it, but they wanted to manufacture them locally. Um, there was the the uh, Waffenfabrik, or uh, weapons factory at Konigsberg, or Kongsberg, uh, that was set up to manufacture firearms, and they wanted to produce, well, we call it 1911, they called it the model of 1914, uh, for the Norwegian military. They had purchased a couple hundred guns from Colt in Hartford for the testing, but the problem was in order to do their own manufacturing they had to buy a license, and they couldn't get that license from Colt because the deal that Colt had worked out with John Browning was that Colt had rights to Browning's designs in the United States, and Fabrique Nationale, FN, in Belgium had rights to those guns in Europe. So if Norway wanted to manufacture these things, they had to buy the rights from FN. Well, World War I's breaking out right around this time, and something kind of convenient happens for the Norwegians. Uh, it kind of sucks for the Belgians, but the Germans show up and they occupy Belgium, and they occupy Liège, and they occupy FN. And Norway takes this opportunity to uh, arrange a contract with FN while the Germans are running the place, and for a single lump sum payment of 25,000 kroner they get the complete technical package for the 1911, and they get rights to produce it in perpetuity. So that's a pretty sweet deal. That I, I think that kind of salved some of the the hurt ego over the gun not being Norwegian in origin. So uh, manufacture started in 1917, um, from 1919 well all the way through well, through the 1930s, and the Norwegians made about 20,000 of them. Uh, now unlike American Colts, these are actually marked on the right side of the slide with the date of manufacture. This is a 1924 example. Uh, serial number on this one is a little over 5600, so give you some idea of production rate. And so the Norwegians are getting 1911s, service pistol, it's working very well for them. They're manufacturing them not super fast, there's not any huge urgency to it, but they're making them through the 1930s. Well, then World War II breaks out, and now the Germans are occupying Norway. A Little bit of uh, karma there maybe. 
And the Germans, after a couple of years, realized that they've got this totally functional small arms factory right there and all the tooling to make guns that are quite effective. And so in an interesting uh, twist of fate, the Germans actually end up adopting the Norwegian 1914, Colt Browning 1911, as a substitute standard pistol for the German military, still in 45 ACP. And they use the Wappenfabrik Konungsberg to manufacture the guns. And during German occupation during the 1940s they make about 10,000 of these pistols. Now unlike most German pistols uh, made in occupied areas, these were actually not Waffenamt proofed until 1945. Only at the very end did they actually have a add a Waffenamt to the German produced guns. However you will find them with uh, the same basic markings as the Norwegian guns, but they get rid of the, the Norwegian royal crest. Not, so only the very late ones actually had Waffenamts, which is again somewhat unusual for the German military. Um, and something to be aware of if you're looking at one. If it's dated prior to 1945, don't expect to see Waffenamts on it. Anyway, uh, the Germans eventually left, kind of got kicked out, and after the war ended the Norwegians realized that there were still a lot of parts left over, so they're kind of in the same situation the Germans had been when the Germans came in. And the Norwegians ended up manufacturing about 3,000 more of these pistols from the parts that had been partially or fully fabricated under German occupation. So in total uh, 32,874 Norwegian 1911s were manufactured. The last 20 of them, in a, a final interesting note here, the last 20 were actually manufactured in 1987 when uh, uh, the Kongsberg plant was looking at getting back into manufacture, not necessarily of 1911s, but they were going to manufacture other service pistols for Norway. And my understanding is they basically wanted to do a, a sort of dry run and, and work the kinks out and see what they were still capable of in terms of manufacturing um, production. So they still had all the tooling and all the plans for these guys, so they ran a production of 20 of these just as a test. Um, interestingly those all ended up getting imported into the US and they're floating around here somewhere these days. So, well I hope you enjoyed the video. I think this is a very cool example of, of a weird history of a firearm, you know, an American design adopted by Norway, then adopted by the Axis, uh, Germany in World War II. You, um, if you would like to have this one yourself, of course it is coming up for sale, check the description text below and you'll find a link to Rock Island's catalog page on this pistol can check out their, uh, their high-res pictures, and if you decide you just can't live without it, you can place a bid online right now. Thanks for watching.